everyone. It's a beautiful sunny spring day and the temps are warming up, the birds are singing, and I think we're in for a good day of birding. So join us and see what we find. So when you're first learning to bird, some of the most difficult birding can be birding by ear, especially this time of year when warblers are moving through, they all have very similar sounds. Some have sounds that are more like scolding calls or alert or alarm sounds. So knowing how to differentiate between some of those small chips and the calls and the songs are all really important parts of learning how to bird by ear. My biggest suggestion is usually coming up with some sort of sound or a mnemonic that reminds you of that call. So one really popular one is Old Sam Peabody Peabody Peabody. That's the call of a white-throated sparrow and that's kind of how I remember how that bird sounds. And then I can go back and look that up later if I'm not sure what bird it is. Now areas like this that are kind of overgrown and shrubby are actually really great places to find a lot of birds. There's a lot of areas to hide. There's dead and decaying wood, which is a great place to find insects. And of course you have a canopy surrounding of taller, larger flowering trees. Shrubby areas or overgrown areas like this is a good spot to find birds like towhees, uh, wrens, Carolina house wrens. And there's one right now. Um, also often titmice, um, any birds that forage on the ground, flickers, northern flickers, which is a type of woodpecker, um, it's a good spot to find a lot of birds like this. As you can see from all the signs of decay in this wood, often lots of holes and pockmarks, these are great places for birds to find overwintering or emerging insects, uh, beetles, larvae, big grubs, all sorts of good stuff. I'm not sure which current this is, but this is one of our Ribes species, and this is a really good fruit plant for birds. So about this time of year, maybe a little later than this, you'll start seeing these really cool yellow uh, pale flowers that droop down, and these turn into really delicious red currants, berries that uh, birds really seem to like. Here's another fruiting tree that unfortunately the birds really like, autumn olive. It's pretty invasive in a lot of our woodlands uh, and it's primarily transported around by birds. They eat the seed, the fruits, and then they poop the seeds out um, and transport the seeds around. So the best way to prevent these from spreading is to cut them before they can go to seed. So here's a really cool and unusual native shrub. This is Durca palustris, 
or Leatherwood. And it's got these kind of, I guess they're already passed, but yellow flowers and rounded leaves. I've never seen it before today. Not sure if birds like to eat the berries, but really nice native shrub. So here's another great type of habitat for birding. This is what we call an edge habitat. You have an open area, like a grassland, albeit a little overgrown with cedars. And that's right next to a wooded area. And the reason this is a great area for birding is because it offers a lot of different resources. Especially it offers areas where birds can go out and forage, but have the protection of understory or canopy when they need to escape a predator. Also gives them shelter, uh, nesting areas, and for some birds, a lot more resources are out in grasslands like this. So far out here, heard lots of tufted titmice, also seen some field sparrows and Eastern towhees. Had to get down on the ground for this one. We've got Jack in the Pulpit. See, it's got this kind of pitcher shape. It's in the Araceae family, so with the Arums, kind of uh, like skunk cabbage, if you guys have ever seen skunk cabbage before. We've got this tri, kind of spade-like leaf. And I also have an angry robin back here, scolding me. But anyways, Jack in the Pulpit is one of my favorite because it's, it's kind of unusual. Yeah, I hear ya. Violets are gorgeous and there's many species of them so I'm not going to try to assume I know which one this is but other than the fact that their flowers are beautiful what else is really cool about violet seeds is that they can be spread by ants which is called myrmecochery and the seeds have these tiny little elizomes which are fleshy protein fat rich bits and the ants will eat them and then toss the seeds into their waste bins. And so by doing this, you're creating this adorable little packet of nutrients, as well as a new location for those seeds to germinate. Pretty cool. 